Hello everyone. It is March 1st, about uh, about 8.40 p.m. My name is Kazimbe Abena, Reiki master teacher, energy worker, tantra practitioner, symbologist, DJ, and Dom. And uh, Sunday night I posted um, uh, about a 20 minute clip about uh, male healing, something that had been on my heart for years. And I have to tell you, it has just exploded. I can't believe that the comments and the people, known and unknown, that have reached out to me. And I just want to thank each and every one of you. Um, you don't know how it's going to impact people until it does, until you kind of feel the reception. And the reception has been fantastic. And it's let me know that it was, it was sorely needed. Um, sorely needed. So... I just, uh, it's been fant fantastic. So thank you so much. Thank everyone for, for reposting and sharing and spreading the word. And, you know, and, and really, I, I, it, it's done so far what I was hoping that it would do in terms of starting discourse, a dialogue, uh, sharing, uh, people coming forth and saying, hey, I need this. Where can I go to get healing? Men have been inboxing me saying, you know, hey, saying thank you. Um, this is a wake-up call for me. Thank you so much, Kazimbe. Um, men that I, I don't even know. So it's just been fantastic. It's been fantastic. Sisters, women have been coming out of the woodwork saying, hey, I've been trying to say this for years. It's about time that a man said it too. So um, it's it's been fantastic. So I really, really, truly hope that it continues to go on and that the healing continues because ultimately... It's about men healing, but it's about our communities healing. It's about our, our nation healing. It's about our world healing. It's just, it's about everyone healing. So with that in vain, I wanted to continue with that. This is male healing part two, because there is a lot to say on this subject. There is a lot. Um, because of the post that I did on Sunday night, I actually was on um, Juju Mama. That's a Kenya and um, Rakim's uh, Juju Mama uh, blog talk show last night, and that was fantastic. There's also a woman on there, a sister by the name of Aurora, who was a tantrika, and it was a great talk, a lot of fun, but that was specifically about male vulnerability, and I wanted to address that today as well. Um, it just won't be, I'm planning for this not to be as long as the other posts, but I just kind of got to go with the way the spirit moves me. Um, so a couple years ago, I um, did uh, a, a uh, workshop on uh, called Opening Up, Opening Up to Ourselves and Each Other. And I put together a formula that equals opening up. So opening up equals acceptance plus communication plus vulnerability. So acceptance equals, oh, I'm sorry, so opening up equals acceptance plus communication plus vulnerability. I'm going to say it one more time. Opening up equals acceptance plus communication plus vulnerability. Because what I've been getting from women is, well, how do we get our men to open up? How do we get them on the table? You know, okay, we see that we need to, but how do we do it? So I think that that formula is really important um, because if you want someone to open up, um, they have to feel that they're going to be accepted and not judged. And I think that as men, this is one of the things that absolutely frightens us to the core, that we are rejected, that we are not accepted as men, that we are regarded as less than, um, that we are shut off, that we are ostracized, as it would anyone. But particularly, obviously, we're talking about men here um, and just the issues that, that we feel and that we have. And I kind of want to speak. I can't speak for every man, but I think that I can speak in general because I don't think that it's spoken enough about male fears and what we, what we fear as men because we have, again, based on patriarchy and what we have set up as men, um, we, we have this persona that we feel that we need to, to measure up to and that we need to match and mimic day in and day out. And it's very empty. So if you, as a woman, or as another man, present 
an environment or set up an environment and your goal is to simply hold that space for that man that needs to heal and needs to express himself without judgment, without judgment and without ridicule. That man is far more likely to open up. Also, if you are vulnerable and tell that person, that man, that you want him to open up, he will then be more vulnerable. I think that in this instance, both parties need to be, be vulnerable. They need to be willing to take the chance to say, listen, I want to hear what you have to say. And the other party has to be willing enough to say, okay, here it is. So being vulnerable really is about saying, I request your truth. I request your truth. I'm willing to accept your truth. And what I like to use uh, kind of as, um, as a description of that is, I'm requesting to hold your heart for a moment. I'll take your heart and I'll hold it. I, I, I promise you, I will be careful with it. I won't drop it. I won't squeeze it too hard. I won't damage it in any way. I won't let it get wet. I won't let any dirt get on it. I will sit here and I will hold it and I will hold the space for you. So there needs to be a request for that. So that's vulnerability in terms of the request. I need this from you. And then those that are giving the heart will say, will know that, okay, this person is not taking what I'm about to do lightly. They're serious. Because what I'm about to say for me is serious. So that should open them up more to wanting to, to perform that act, wanting to offer you their heart. You're asking to receive, they're willing to give it. And then the third thing, communication, is once you get it, there has to be some action. Once that, ex once that the, ground has, the groundwork has been set, the environment has been set, the vulnerability has been expressed, then there needs to take action, there needs to be action that needs to be taken, which is communication. And it, can, it needs to be both. I, I think it's best if it's, if it's both. But men who are used to holding onto things and bottling things up inside, this is not the time to remain silent. This is the time to let it all go. Again, and let it all go because as hopefully what has been established in the beginning, that person wants to hear what you have to say and they will not judge you. And just as you're being vulnerable, they're being vulnerable as well by telling you that they need to hear what you have to say. I think that in our uh, society with men, um, there's something called, there's intrinsic value versus instrumental value. So intrinsic value, and again, these things happen across gender lines, of course, <laughs> because we're, we're in a commercial society, we're in a commerce, so things are commodified, things are used. But I think this happens, and we're talking about men here. In terms of men, I think men have been wholeheartedly instrumentalized in terms of their values. You know, what, and, and what I mean by that is, so an intrinsic, someone, something or someone being intrinsically valued means that they don't necessarily have to do something. They're just valued for what they are or who they are. They're valued for their wisdom. They're valued because of their wit. They're valued just because, of, just because they're a human being and they have a beating heart and a soul and a spirit. They're valued because of their smile, their beauty, their handsomeness. On the flip side, something having instrumental value is something that is valued because of what it can do for us. Money. Or let's, let's break it down. A man has a job. He can get us things. Um, he can give us flowers. Um, he takes us places. He provides a roof over our heads, things like that. Now, am I saying that th people and things should not be valued instrumentally? Absolutely not. You have to have that. Absolutely not. What I am saying, though, is that there needs to be more of a balance. 
And I don't think that there are enough men out there that believe they can be valued without having to do something. Like they're not valued just, just for who they are. They have to do something. So there's this constant fear of, man, if I don't do this like this every time, I'm on, the, I'm on the chopping block. I'm going down. If I can't provide this each and every time, I'm going down. So if times get make it hard, I'm going down. And no one's going to support me because no one sees me as anything else but a meal ticket. No one sees me as anything else but a provider. Now, again, is it wrong to see someone as a provider? I do not believe so. But it can be problematic to see someone just as a provider only. To see someone ha as having instrumental value only. So again, we're talking about balance. Let's see someone as having instrumental value. Let's see someone as being good, a good provider, which is a fantastic trait. But then let's see someone else, let's see that same person at the same time as having wisdom or as having kindness. Now, perhaps with some of these men, they have not shown that they have, they have not shown what their intrinsic value is enough. I know as men, we again, we get caught up in our own system of patriarchy. We get caught up in this own paradigm, in this, this paradigm, this one-dimensional paradigm and archetype that we've set up. So we don't even show anything else. Men, be aware if you're doing that. Women, people around this men, other men, people around this man, other men, Try to see if you can get that man to dig down deep and see what he values about himself. And you may find that at times, ultimately, that's a problem. He may not know. He may not know. Other than from what he does. He may be simply valued by what he does, and that's it. That's all there is. If I don't have a great car, I'm nothing. If I don't have a well-paying job, what else is there? How else can I define myself? So this then is when we have to dig down deep and it will require the man who is being healed and those around him to really dig down deep and affirm with him and bring up those issues, exalt those issues or those characteristics that you know those man that man is also valued for it can also be valued for and and that are intrinsic to that man very very important can this happen in one city it can it may take more than that it may take a lot more than that it may take the time to just sit sit down and say okay let's really think about this let's let's reevaluate re you and who you are. And that's, there's nothing wrong with that. But I think that it may take a shift because we are so entrenched in this commerce and everyone looking at each other as commodities. So it indeed will probably take a paradigm shift to get out of that. It indeed probably will. And that's fine. But I think that once you start thinking in those terms, the shift will happen. And then that man who is seeking the healing will start to identify. And then he, along with people around him, can start to nurture and understand the expression of those other intrinsic values, those other characteristics that he has inside of him. And that's very, very important. Very, very important. And then once that happens, it's about affirming him, affirming those, those characteristics and those traits.
affirming who he is, affirming who he is along with what he does, affirming who he is along with what he does. Because a man needs to know that if I can't do something, am I still a man? And the answer should be yes. You deserve respect because you've been born, because you are a human being, because you are a soul, you are an energy, energy being within the body of a sh within the shell of a body. For that alone, you deserve respect. I think we see this, the same commodification happening with women. Again, it crosses gender lines here, of course. I'm focusing on men here because we're talking about male healing, but the same you see this happen with women. What it what it what it how it typically expresses itself is, uh, she can't have a child. She's not she's not a real woman. Until you're a mother, you're not you're not really a woman. So we have to really kind of look at how we are identifying ourselves. And for those men that are so stuck on doing something, which I get, you need to do, we all need to do, but balance. Because if you look at the structure of a bone in the human body, it's part collagen and it's part calcium. The calcium is what makes it hard, of course. Now the collagen is what makes it pliable and flexible. If you took the collagen out of a bone, it would be far less stronger than what it is now. Far less. And it would break a lot quicker. Put the collagen in, it doesn't break because the bone is flexible. The bone is flexible. So, when we require so much, or when all we do is require, and all we want is action, and we don't balance that out with just being, men will often work ourselves to death, work ourselves into sickness, do ourselves under the ground, um, spend beyond our means, extend ourselves beyond our means. And, you know, just I just want to say this here. I'm, I am, of course, talking about men who are trying to do the right thing, obviously. So let me, let me, let me be, let me just make that clear. Men who are trying to do the right thing, um, obviously. And for those that aren't, well, they have a host of issues as well, and they still need to be healed. But, you know, often, men are just trying to do. They're just trying to do, because they feel like that's the only way they can be accepted. So if you want your man to heal, to start to heal, to get on that journey, let him know that he's more than what he does. That he is valued just because of, of who he is, just because he's alive and what he brings to you intrinsically. You love him and you value him. And I think for him and those people around him, that can get us down further down the path of healing. Well, I said I was going to make it short, and I'll be darned, it's 19 minutes. <laughs> I'm sorry. I tried. I really did. But I just had some things to say. All right. Well, I will probably post on this again because we'll probably get some more comments about this. I want to keep this thing going as long as, it, as I need to. Um, please comment. Uh, please share. Um, again, this is about male healing, so I am not trying to pit anyone against each other. I'm not trying to uh, pit women against men or men against women. That is not what these posts are about at all. So 
excuse me, that's just not what I'm doing. That's not what I'm doing. I'm about healing here. And that's what I would appreciate that we all continue to to really talk about. And so far, that's that's been what it's about. But I just want to make that clear. I just want to make that clear. We've done enough finger pointing and blaming and it's gotten us nowhere. It's gotten us nowhere. So this this is about this is about male healing and um, and respecting the women who have been sticking with us, who have been asking us as men to heal and who have been putting up with us and healing us and who have been healing themselves. And yes, we know women have their own issues just as men have. We have our own issues. Everyone has issues. But again, I wanted to uh, drop these posts because I just simply don't think that male healing is addressed is addressed anywhere near enough. And so I am hoping that this can really start a strong dialogue, communication, and action toward that end. All right, my name is Kazim Bayabena. It's been a pleasure. And you'll be hearing from me again sometime soon. Peace and love to you. Good night.